Hello, my name's Ian Heafy. I'm a Chartered Quantity Surveyor by training, and I specialise now in procurement and contractor advice and dispute resolution. I've been involved with the NEC for the last 15 years, and I've been helping clients on an international basis adopt it, particularly in the Middle East and the Far East. And I'm here today to talk about the international application of the NEC and a comparison to the fitting In this contract. module, we shall be covering the following issues. An introduction, session one, background and underlying principles, the concept of the contract. Session two, we'll cover the ECC systems and contract strategy, the options available. Session three, we'll cover roles and responsibilities. Session four, general provisions and contractors' main responsibilities. Session five, time, testing and defects. Session six, we'll cover payment. Session seven, we'll cover compensation events. Session eight, any other aspects of the ECC that are pertinent. And then finally, in session nine, the results of this module, delegates should understand the philosophy of the NEC and the benefits it can deliver, understand how it can be applied on an international basis, gain an appreciation of some of the key differences between the NEC and more traditional forms of contract, such as FIDIC, also develop skills and advise on appropriate contract strategies, understand the roles and responsibilities of the parties, and understand key clauses within the ECC contract. Next contract in the suite is the Engineering and Construction contract, the ECC. This contract is designed for high complexity projects from design through to construction and the initial stages of operation. There is also a subcontract, the ECS, that can be adopted that works under the ECC for which the main contractor can engage subcontract. For further information in relation to the NEC, any of its contracts or products, please contact the NEC at www.neccontract.com. Thank you.